Congresswoman Crockett, I want to start first with your reaction to the beating of Tyree Nichols. What do you make of the actions of these five officers? You know, unfortunately, Alicia, um, this isn't something that we haven't seen before. Um, we've seen it for years. In fact, we've seen it for decades. And every time we see it, it is one of those things that shocks the conscience, uh, allegedly, I say, because it doesn't shock our conscience in this country enough to the extent that we actually make for some reforms. This country has led this world in so many ways on a right path, but this is one path in which we have obviously not been leaders. We know that other countries do not have the policing issues that we have in this country. So we know that this is a problem that we can solve. It's about whether or not we have the courage to do what's right. Talk to me about that courage. What will it take to both break this cycle of police violence and what type of police reform do you think actually has a chance of passing both chambers of Congress? Yeah, so it's interesting that you bring this up. As a civil rights lawyer, uh, many people asked over and over, why did you run for office? And that is because I got tired of sitting down with one mother at a time saying, I know that your child is gone, but, right? And so part of this just is policy, as Reverend Al talked about. So some of the things that he talked about was having skin in the game. We know that qualified immunity basically gives all these officers a license to kill. Um, we need to make sure that officers that do things like this are not protected. We also need to make sure that those uh, pretty pensions that so many of them have because the police unions have negotiated for those amazing pensions. When someone does wrong, we need to make sure that there is no question about the fact that that pension is gone. Right now, literally, um, you know, we didn't have to wait with bated breath this time for an arrest, but nine times out of 10, these officers usually get by without even being arrested, let alone convicted. And we know that the civil liability side of things, um, nothing seems to happen. You know, I represent the family of Jordan Edwards, the 15 year old out of Dallas, Texas. And sadly enough, while we were able to get a conviction, the first one in almost 40 years in Dallas County, we still have a city that is fighting paying this family when a 15 year old was shot in the head with an AR-15. We've just learned that Tyree Nichols' parents have accepted the president's invitation to attend the State of the Union. What do you want that message to be from President Biden to the nation as he has their attention? You know, what I want the message to be is that this is not a partisan issue. This is not a black and white issue to the extent that we're looking at black or white officers. This is a blue on minority community issue. Um, this is something that we all should take up. We can back the blue while still supporting reforms that make our streets safe for all of us. I have never been anti-law enforcement, but, but what I am is I am anti-treating human beings who happen to look like me any other way than with a manner of respect. And what we saw was nothing more than disrespect and heinousness. And to juxtapose the what we saw with uh, Speaker Pelosi's husband and how law enforcement treated an assailant, a white assailant who had a weapon in his hand and the way that Tyree was treated, the fact that these videos came out the same day tells you what policing in America looks like. It looks like a courtesy when you're a Caucasian assailant and it looks like a presumption that you are a criminal when you are African-American.